Why this story? Um, it was kind of a combination of having heard about the story of, of Vedran Smilovich, the actual cellist of Sarajevo, and being strangely captivated by by that story, and just I don't know, it just seemed to me there was something there. Um, but for many years, I couldn't figure out what. And then after I'd finished my last book, it was you know I finished that book in at the end of maybe 2001, 2002, and it was the early days of the war in Afghanistan and, and, and the lead up to the Iraq war. And there was just two things that, that I was thinking a lot about. And one is, you know, how we seem to completely ignore what war will do to people for whom business is not, war is not their business, you know. We, you know, journalists and politicians and soldiers and all these people, we talk about war and we talk about infrastructure and how it will be destroyed and all that. We don't talk about, you know, what's it going to do to the guy who works at a at a bank or or you know a bakery, a bakery or whatever. When one day, his, you know, the electricity is off and the taps don't bring water and your bank card doesn't get any money for you and and that one day lasts four years, you know, as it did in Sarajevo, you know, what or, or it has it has in Iraq right now. Say, you know, we don't. These are not stories we think about or care about um, enough. So I was thinking about that a lot and trying to figure out oh, how the hell do you write about that, um, and also the willingness with which we abdicate control over who we hate in, in, in society. Um, we, re we respond skeptically to love, right? If I were to say, hey man, I love you, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah, your, your response isn't going to be immediately, oh, well then I love you, sir. You're going to think, really? Well, what do I know about Steve Galloway? I mean, he seems okay, but do I really love him? No. But if I were to say, I hate you, you're an asshole, I really loathe you, chances are you're not going to have that same conversation in your head. You're going to say, you know what, then, jerk, I hate you back. I'm going to hate you more than you hate me. Let's up the ante here. Um, and, you know, what, what happens in the world is, is we let other people tell us who to hate, including the people we end up hating. And that's exactly what happened in in Sarajevo is one group of people was told by their leadership that another group of people hated them and so that group responded in force and as a result the group of people you know the first group did end up hating them because they were being treated in a way that breeds hatred and just goes back and forth and back and forth like the world's worst game of ping pong until People are so entrenched that they don't even remember why anyone hated anyone in the first place, and we just call it history. And again, I had no idea, like, how the hell do we write about that? And, and then I sort of remembered the story of the cellist to Sarajevo. I'd been thinking of do, doing something with Sarajevo, because if you want to write a book about you know what war does to civilians and you don't want it to be, I wanted it to be contemporary. I didn't want it the lens of history to give us the perspective that we could just think, oh, well, this is something that happens in the past. There's a really short list of places to choose from in the first world that have undergone city sieges in the last 30 or 40 years. Then I remember the story of the Cellus de Sarajevo, and I thought that is a perfect entry point. Oddly enough, despite being the title character, we don't really f spend much time with him, nor no. really get much of his of of his motivation and what he does between it's we see him at the beginning and then we see him playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and you know I think that's it's part of it's a core element of what I wanted to say with the book. Um, the actual cellist of Sarajevo is entirely unimportant. What's important is the thing he did and how that affects the people who witness it. Um, it's like, say, with this book, I, Stephen Galloway is entirely unimportant in the book. You know, what I think or do or why I do it isn't the point. The point is what happens when people read the book. Um, it's, you know, the, the 
effective art on its audience. And, you know, one of the things I, I've been hearing a lot in, in just talking with people about the book and this stuff is, is the, the, the sentiment that, you know, it was really amazing about the story is that he, you know, did this grandiose artistic act in a time of war. It, it, you know, it seems to me, and I think it seemed to a lot of people in Sarajevo, that that's exactly when you do need to do things like that. Art, art is not a luxury item. That you know, this is how we view art and entertainment in the West. Is it, it's it's you know, books and music are are, are entertainment. They're 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 a they're a luxury item, and in t in tough times, you pair back, and these things go. You know, when you're under siege and in a war and in all sorts of situations that are dehumanizing, it's more important probably to have things like music and and other artistic forms to remind you of the fact that you are not an animal. You, know, you are not the, the dehumanized drone that, that the conditions are trying to make you into. Because it was I mean, in Sarajevo, it wasn't just this guy. There was a string quartet that played all over the place. There were dance recitals. There were film festivals. Like there, there was an extraordinarily amount of artistic expression during the war. The book is *The Cellist of Sarajevo*. It's a novel. I've been speaking with the writers Stephen Galloway and *The Cellist of Sarajevo*, published by Knopf Canada.